is 1963. The Cold War is heating to a fever pitch. A tense world has witnessed escalation of the Vietnam conflict, the building of the Berlin Wall, the Bay of Pigs invasion, and the Cuban Missile Crisis, bringing civilization to the brink of destruction. But from the unique perspective of one man, there is a lighter side to everything, even Armageddon. Well, boys, I reckon this is it. Nuclear combat toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies. All right, tell you what you better do, old buddy. I can no longer sit back and allow communist infiltration to sap and impurify all of our precious bodily fluids. This man is obviously a psychotic. I do not avoid women, Mandrake. Yeah. But I, I do deny them my essence. <laughs> yes. Has that plane really got a chance of getting through? If the pilot's good, see. I mean, I mean, if he's really sharp, he can barrel that baby in solo. I mean, <laughs> you ought to see it sometime. It's a sight, you know, a big plane like a fifty-two. Vroom, With the screenplay almost complete, Kubrick turns his attention to building the ambitious sets required for Dr. Strangelove at Shepperton Studios. He was fascinated by my wartime record as a, as a fighter pilot, so, uh, and he was a frustrated pilot himself, and uh, we immediately hit it off, which finally resulted in my driving him to and from Shepperton Studios, where we were making Strange Love in my E-Type Jaguar, which then was a faster sports car. Stanley insisted on my driving at not over 30 miles an hour, which was miserable, but you get to know each other pretty well. Much of the action in Doctor Strange Love takes place in the now legendary war room. Although no such place actually exists, Kubrick insists that the set reflect a totally realistic atmosphere. He reviews Ken Adams' initial sketches for the war room set. He loved it. He said, that's exactly right, you know, you've got it. And then I said, you know, yeah, everybody is telling me this man is so difficult to work with. And, and in my first conversation with him, I seemed to be getting there. So I was so optimistic. And then, as always with Stanley, about three or four weeks later, we are driving to Shepard, and he said, gee, Ken, I've been thinking about that more room. You put it on two levels, and what am I going to do with the 70 extras on the upper level? And I think you have to rethink your concept. And I was really thrown, because uh, I had to start from scratch. I tried to calm down by taking a walk in the grounds at Shepard Studios. And then, uh, after I was sufficiently calmed down, started doodling again on, on, on different uh, ideas. Adam designs a set that will become legendary. To build the war room, he employs more than 150 tradesmen. The set measures 130 feet long, 100 feet wide, and 35 feet high. The centerpiece is a table 22 feet in diameter. Stanley liked it and said, can you cover it in, in green bays? And I said, yeah, sure, I can cover it in green bays, but you know, we're shooting black and white, that doesn't make any difference because I want to give the impression that these 26 characters sitting around this table uh, are involved in a gigantic poker game for the fate of the world, you see. Over 10 miles of electrical cable are required to light the big board which keeps track of U.S. nuclear bombers. The floors were made of formica, black formica, and we had to wear slippers on the set, save scratching it, because it's marked very easily. They all came through one little door at the far end of the set, and the general reaction was, wow, look at this. We knew we were in, a, in an impressive movie when you saw that set. Adam and his team must also create a set of the interior of a B-52 bomber with no cooperation from the U.S. military. I found a book called The Strategic Air Command by Mel Hunter, and on the front of it had the one picture which we desperately needed was not a very good picture, but a picture of the interior of the B-52 cockpit. And that was our starting point. We then had to really invent everything from then on. Peter was brilliant 
and because I more or less handed that whole interior over to Peter and he spent hours and hours on switches and morning lights, which fascinated uh, Stanley. Merton's designs are realistic enough to cause concern in unexpected circles. The publicity people invited some American Air Force personnel to, to look at the shooting we did and they literally went white when they saw the inside of the B-52 because they said it was absolutely correct, even to the little black box, which was a CRM. So the next day I got a memo from Stanley. He hopes that I've got all my research from legal sources or from justifiable uh, sources because otherwise I and he could be in serious trouble uh, with a possible investigation by the uh, FBI.